Hi, in this video we're going to be looking at what we mean by inelastic price elasticity of demand. So in the previous video we looked at elastic price elasticity and before that we sort of gave an introduction to what price elasticity was, so check out those videos if you haven't already. But this video, yes, we're focusing on inelastic demand. So our definition of inelastic demand is shown here with our price elasticity lying between zero and one. Again, remember that we're only focusing on the positive or the absolute value of this price elasticity. So this inelastic demand could be a price elasticity of say 0.5, but equally it could be a value of minus 0.5 or just anything between well, negative one and positive one. So a lot of this video is going to just be sort of the opposite to some extent of the elastic demand video. So with price inelastic demand, a percentage change in price will cause a smaller percentage change in quantity demanded. So similarly to what we said in the previous video, if we were to have a 10% change in price, now with inelastic demand, what this means is that we're going to have a smaller percentage change in quantity demanded. So this might cause say a 5% change in quantity demanded. We could have a a 6%, 7%, anything less than 10% is what we're going to have with an inelastic change in, well, an inelastic change in price, a, a change in price with inelastic price elasticity of demand. And so if this was a positive change in price, we could have a 5% increase in demand or a 6% decrease in demand. Both of these would be inelastic uh, or the good will be price inelastic if this is the case. And again, the smaller the price elasticity of demand here, the more inelastic the demand. So if we were to have a 0.5 price elasticity of demand, this is more inelastic than say a 0.9 price elasticity of demand. And this should make sense because we, we said that elastic price elasticity is greater than one. So say a PED of say five, that's gonna be very elastic. And so as we get smaller towards 0.5, we're getting more and more inelastic. So this should all make sense if we've seen the previous video and understood that. So the final point, again, the opposite of elastic, inelastic demand is going to give us a steeper demand curve. And we can see this on this diagram below that this is quite an inelastic demand curve. Uh, we saw that our elastic demand curve looked more like this. If I, if I was able to draw a straight line, it would look something like that, where it's, it's flatter. And now that we've got more inelastic, we have got a steeper demand curve. Now, why is this? Well, let's imagine that we were to start at price P0 in our demand curve. If we use that, we can see that this would give us this quantity of Q0. And let's give ourselves a large decrease in price and we change our price down to P1. Well, we see that if, again, if we use our inelastic demand curve, this now gives us quantity Q1, our quantity demanded. And so we can see that this large change in price from P0 to P1 has only caused a small change in quantity from Q0 to Q1. And this is what we were sort of getting at with these examples up here, where we said, we can have a large change in price of say 10%, but this is only going to give us a five or 6% change in quantity demanded because it's an inelastic demand curve. And this, this comes about because we have a steep demand curve that is inelastic. And as we did in the previous video, we look at the special case, which is perfectly inelastic demand. And as we say that as we get smaller and smaller, our price elasticity gets more and more inelastic, and the smallest it can get is zero. Note that this isn't negative infinity, because negative infinity would be perfectly elastic. Our perfectly inelastic is zero. That's the smallest we can get in absolute terms. So this is our PED of zero, and it gives us a perfectly vertical demand curve. So this is a perfectly inelastic demand curve. And if we look at it intuitively, let's have a look at P0. Well, if we have our price P0, we're going to demand a quantity Q. 
if we were to decrease our price quite substantially to P1, well, we still demand Q. So no matter what our price changes to, if we increase our price, we still demand Q. If we decrease our price even further to say P2, we are still going to be demanding Q. So no matter what we change the price, we're going to have the same quantity. So our demand is completely inelastic, and this is why we call it inelastic. We can also say it's completely unresponsive to changes in price. With perfectly inelastic demand, a change in price does not change a quantity demanded. We're always going to demand this amount no matter what the price is. And we can't think of many examples of this in the real world, but if we consider, say, food as just a broad generic uh, good, just food, we are going to be willing to pay whatever price for food because if we don't, we're going to die, basically. We need food. So that is, that is an example that might fall under something near to perfect inelasticity, which says that it's a necessity and it's going to be inelastic. But that will, that will be something we'll discuss in future videos where we look at factors affecting elasticity. That's not a subject for this video. The next one will look at unit elasticity as a special case, but that will wrap up our video on inelastic demand. So please do leave a like rating if it was at all useful. Make sure to check out the playlist for more videos like this one and subscribe to add some econ to your subscription feed.